Hello dear students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Gurmanjit Kaur, Associate Professor, Khalsa College of Education, Ranjit Avenue, Amritsar. Well students, today we will discuss the role of Panchayati Raj institutions in management of educational administration. After studying this topic, you will be able to explain the meaning of educational management describe the significance of educational management, enumerate the structure of Panchayati Raj institutions in India, explain the constitutional obligations regarding Panchayati Raj institutions, discuss the role of different samitis constituted for Panchayati Raj institutions, illustrate the structure and functions of Gram Panchayat in educational management, explain the structure and functions of Panchayat Samiti in educational management and describe the structure and functions of Jila Parishad in educational management. In order to understand the role of Panchayati Raj institutions in the management of educational administration, let us understand what actually educational management is. Education is the stipulation of a sequence of learning experiences to students in order to pass on knowledge, ethics, attitudes and skills with the aim of making them dynamic members of society. Educational management is the process of planning, organizing, directing, controlling activities of an organization by utilizing human and material resources for accomplishing the functions of teaching, extension work and research. At macro level, it focuses on educational planning, goals, principles, approaches and processes. In addition, at the micro level, it deals with institutional planning and educational administration. The structure of educational management involves planning, organizing, directing, supervising and evaluating. Now let us discuss why educational management is important. Educational management is important as it deals with various administrative problems of educational organization like it includes the study of various theories of management science which define and describe the roles and responsibilities of the educational manager and develop managerial skills. It helps in decision making, problem solving, communication, managing information and building effective teams. It helps in the planning of co-curricular activities, academics and preparation of timetable. It also helps in the maintenance of school records and evaluating students achievements. It handles financing and budgeting of the institution. Now we will discuss how Panchayati Raj system came into existence after independence. After independence, India has strived to accelerate the process of development through active participation of the people at the grassroots level. The decentralization of socio-economic development programs was conceptualized with the commencement of first five-year plan. It was envisaged that the villages would undertake and execute the program of development with actual support of the state. Accordingly, it was felt necessary to change the structure of administration. So, launching of community development program in 1952 was the first step in this direction. Even the Balwant Rai Mehta Committee in 1957 recommended to create new structures and involve local people in the development process. 
the article 40 of the constitution of india declared that the states shall take steps to organize village panchayats and endow them with such powers and authority as may be necessary to enable them to function as the units of self government it paved the way for the introduction of panchayati raj a scheme of democratic decentralization in india even mahatma gandhi advocated panchayati raj as the foundation of india's political system he suggested centralized form of government as where each village would be responsible for its own affairs the term for such a vision was gram swaraj that is village self governance with the 73rd amendment the constitution act 1992 was passed it envisages states to establish a three tier system of strong viable and responsive panchayats at the village intermediate and district levels similarly with the 74th amendment the constitution act 1992 got passed it envisages to establish the municipalities in the urban areas states are expected to act in consonance with the spirit of different acts for establishing a strong and viable system of local self government by the recommendations of different committees and obligations of constitution these institutions now have sufficient powers responsibilities and finances to prepare plans and implementation of schemes for economic development and social justice the panchayati raj now functions as a governance in which gram panchayats are the basic unit of local administration the system has three levels gram panchayat at village level mandal parishad or block samiti or panchayat samiti at block level and jilla parishad at district level the 73rd and 74th amendments to the constitution of india added a new chapter in the process of democratic decentralization in india in terms of these amendments the responsibility for taking decisions regarding activities at the grassroots level which directly affects the lives of the people would rest upon the elected members of the people themselves where the development of panchayats is seen as a boon for the villagers as they can now discuss about the issues with confidence and even seek solutions through the panchayat in their region the panchayat system has made a common person more aware of their rights even in the rural areas the good thing about panchayats is their high degree of accountability before the people when it comes to administrative benefits the panchayati raj has bridged the gulf between the central government and the people in the rural areas now we will understand how educational administration is working under panchayati raj institutions the panchayati raj or municipal bodies have an important role to play in the reconstruction of the educational system it is being realized that there is an alienation between the community in general and educational system in particular this is the reason that efforts towards ensuring large enrollment raising retention rate and improving teaching learning process have not succeeded substantially the establishment of institutions of local self government may be seen as a significant step in the direction of making the system more effective as well as responsive the panchayati raj or municipal bodies should be made responsible for planning execution and monitoring of various educational programs at different levels it may not be out of place to mention that the national policy on education and the program of action 1992 emphasize the importance of decentralization of planning and management of education at all levels to ensure greater community participation keeping in view 
the recommendations of the program of action, the Minister of Human Resource Development in his capacity as the chairman of the Central Advisory Board of Education set up a committee. Under the chairmanship of Shri M. Virappa Moeli, the Chief Minister of Karnataka to formulate guidelines on decentralized management of education in the context of 73rd and 74th Constitutional Amendment Acts. The committee under its terms of reference was to formulate guidelines for the management of education at district, sub-district and village levels. The Department of Education, Ministry of Human Resource Development and set up a core group at National Institute of Educational Planning and Administration comprising Shri P. K. Umashankar, Shri Baldev Mahajan and Dr. S. C. Nuna for assisting the Central Advisory Board of Education Committee in its deliberations. The core group assisted the committee in its deliberations by preparing a number of documents, background papers and materials for the use of committee. These areas are the major recommendations of committee regarding educational administration in India. Now, we will discuss about Gram Panchayat Institution and its education management. The program of action approved by the Central Advisory Board of Education has given the considerable importance to village education committees. The village normally represents a cohesive community and is ideally suited for promoting programs involving support of the community such as early childhood care and education, primary education, non-formal education and adult education. Village education committees may be considered as the ideal organization to mobilize and involve people in the educational efforts. Now, let's see the role of Gram Panchayat in educational administration where Panchayat comprises a single village. The Constitution's 73rd Amendment Act 1992 was enacted to reform the Panchayat system in India. The legislature of Indian states were given the powers for composing the Gram Sabha and Gram Panchayats. Gram Panchayat is the organization of elected panches by the members of the Gram Sabha of the village. The number of members in a Gram Panchayat depends upon the population of the village. The functions of Gram Panchayat includes implementation of welfare plans, social justice and development, upliftment of women, economic development, etc. Gram Panchayat also plays a significant role in educational management at grassroots level. Central Advisory Board of Education Committee a report of 1993 also emphasizes the decentralization of paths for the successful educational management. The committee observed that in order to secure effective participation of the people, there was a need for broad based participative structures for education as distinct from the general panchayati ra system. To look after the administration at village level, there should be a Panchayat Standing Committee on Education comprising not less than 15 members. This will include Chairman of the Panchayat, one member each from SC, ST, BC and minority categories, a representative of Parent Teacher Association, an Anganwadi worker, a person interested in education and Member Secretary, Headmaster of Primary or Upper Primary Schools. The main powers of Gram Panchayat suggested by the committee are first of all to visit educational institutions, then to check attendance and other registers to inquire and to report the concerned authorities on educational deficiencies and requirements in the village, then to recommend annual budget of school to the concerned authority, to report on regularity of students teachers attendance and school functioning to frame the school calendar under the guidance of the Jilla Parishad. Now let us discuss the role and function of Gram Panchayat in educational management. It has to supervise adult education, early childhood care and education, non-formal and primary education. 
supervise composite upper primary school under delegation of authority from panchayat samiti promote enrollment drives in primary schools and persuade parents of non attending children to send their wards to the schools reduce dropout in primary schools by initiating measures and services for retention assist in smooth functioning of primary schools seek support of teachers youth women and other for educational and other linked health and welfare programs then mobilize resources and help schools to have water supply urinals playgrounds and other facilities prepare plans and proposals within their resources for development of education in the village to attain total adult literacy and universalization of primary education then presenting reports and proposals to panchayat samitis and make periodical self assessment of programs of committee's efforts coordination with social service department and committees for mutual support next is role of gram panchayat in educational administration where village panchayat comprises a group of villages almost all the functions are the same first village education committee is constituted by village panchayat its a sub committee constituted with not less than 7 and not more than 15 members these members will include chairman of panchayat or a member of panchayat from the village concerned one member each of sc st bc and minority categories a representative of parent teacher association an anganwadi worker a person interested in education from the village member secretary headmaster of primary or upper primary school the main powers of gram panchayat in educational management will be to visit educational institutions to recommend annual budget of school to concerned authority to undertake construction and repair works entrusted to them then to report on regularity of students teacher attendance and school functioning the main functions of gram panchayat in educational administration are to supervise adult education early childhood care and education non formal and primary education then supervise composite upper primary school under delegation of authority from panchayat samiti to frame the school calendar under the guidance of the jila parishad promote enrollment drives in primary schools and persuade parents of non attending children to send their wards to the schools reduce dropout in primary schools by initiating measures and services for retention assist in smooth functioning of primary schools seek support of teachers youth and women and others for educational and other linked health and welfare programs mobilize resources and help schools to have water supply urinals playgrounds and other facilities prepare plans and proposals within their resources for development of education in the village to attain total adult literacy and universal primary education present reports and proposals to panchayat samitis and make periodical self assessment of progress of committee's efforts coordination with other social service department and committees for mutual support now let's understand the role of panchayat samiti in educational administration panchayat samiti is an elected statutory body at intermediary level and is endowed with comprehensive functions bestowed with the requisite authority and resources it should be free from governmental interference and control the state government shall have to give guidance the area of panchayat samiti shall not be too large and unmanageable and not too small negating the principles of economy and efficiency it should be financially viable and within the reach of the common people in its activities panchayat samiti standing committee on education comprises of not less than 
and not more than 17 members. These will include chairman of Panchay Smithi, one member each from SC, ST, BC and minority categories, one representative of parent teacher association or non-governmental organization, one or two representatives of village education committee by rotation, a principal of degree or pre-degree college, a headmaster of school complex or of secondary school, a representative of teachers and member secretary, block education officer or its equivalent. The powers of Panchayat Smithi in educational management are to recruit staff for adult education, non-formal education and early childhood care and education programs to appoint staff in schools from approved panels then to transfer teachers within their jurisdiction to perform academic supervision of all institutions up to upper primary level then to delegate the power of supervision over composite upper primary schools in VEC for purpose of continuity to prepare budget and to sanction plans and expenditures from the Panchayat Smithi education budget to channelize funds to aided instructions under supervision of Jilla Prishad to levy development fees and other fees to raise resources to raise public contribution and donations to propose measures Panchay Samti to raise resources. So students these were the main powers of Panchay Samiti. Now see how it functions in education management. It deals with management of adult education, non-formal education, early childhood care and education and the primary and upper primary schools under the supervision of Jilla Prashan. Supervision and channelization of grant to the aided primary and upper primary schools in their jurisdiction under the guidance of Jilla Prashan. Academic supervision of all primary and upper primary schools including private schools. Preparation of plans for development of education up to primary level in their jurisdiction. Coordination with other social service department and committees for mutual support. The next we will talk about Jila Prishad or district council or Jila Panchayat. It is the third tier of the Panchayati Ra system. Jila Prishad is again an elected body. Chairpersons or block promokes of block smithies are also representatives in the Jila Prishad. The members of the state legislature and the members of the parliament of India are members of the Jila Prishad. Jila Prishad also plays a significant role in educational administration. Jila Prishad Standing Committee on Education comprises of not less than 15 and not more than 21 members. These are Chairman Jila Prishad, a representative each of SC, ST, BC and minorities, a representative of parent teacher association or non-governmental organization, two or more representatives of Panchayat Samiti and Panchayat or village education committees, principal of a college, professor of education from university or college, principal of diet, a head of school complex or secondary school, a representative of teachers, member secretary, chief education officer or its equivalent. The main powers of Jila Prishad in educational management includes to establish and maintain school up to secondary level including the recruitment, appointments and transfer of staff payment of salaries and exercise control over the staff subject to government guidelines. To exercise control and academic supervision of all schools including aided and private schools up to secondary level but subject to government guidelines. To lay down academic and administrative norms for better functioning of educational institutions 
to disburse grants to aided schools as per the government guidelines to supervise the work of panchayat samiti education committees and panchayat education committees to prepare and sanction education budget to administer district education fund to prepare perspective plan for district to propose measures including levy of cess surcharge and taxes for mobilizing additional resources for education to the jila parishad now let's discuss the major functions of jila parishad in education management overall supervision of all education programs in the district up to secondary level secondly preparation implementation and review of plans for development of education up to secondary level in the district formulation and operationalization of programs to achieve total literacy and universal elementary education establish and manage schools up to secondary level then academic supervision of all institutions government aided private up to secondary level in the district including schools in the municipalities preparation and coordination of plans for development of education up to secondary level including those of municipalities to review progress and guide panchayat samiti and panchayat education committees in their tasks implementation of programs for improvement of quality of education coordination with other social service departments and committees for mutual support to summarize the topic we can say that overall panchayati raj institutions play a significant role on educational administration the new panchayat act has conferred various powers and responsibilities on the village panchayat in different fields the panchayat can give necessary instructions to different individuals institutions or owners of institutions to perform various duties and responsibilities the panchayat system also works towards the development of their regions according to the needs of the people a panchayat works at various levels from creation of necessary establishments such as primary schools to hygiene related issues to water requirements to seek the central government's help towards generating jobs at the village level as well as district level thank you